Now that we have a new algebraic operation with matrices, we, uh, we should see how it interacts with all of our other ma matrix opera operations. Uh, so, for example, we should see how does matrix multiplication interact with scalar multiplication or uh, matrix addition. So uh, let's start with associativity. So associativity is a very useful algebraic property, and usually uh, multiplications that we've dealt with in the past are associative. Uh, so let's check to see if this is true for matrix multiplication. So we need to check with both scalar and uh, matrix multiplication. So when I let's check scalar multiplication first. So what I'm saying is if you have, there are sort of three flavors of associativity. So we might have a scalar R times a scalar at times, a scalar S times a matrix like this. And we should check, is this the same as if you multiply R the scalars first, and then after that, the matrix? Well, you know, if A is, for A is, right, A, I, J, right? So S times A is S, A, I, J. And so R times that is R times S, A, I, J. But look, the, inside this entry, this is uh, real multiplication, so multiplication of real numbers, or scalars. So that multiplication is definitely associative. So we could move the parentheses over to here. But this is the right-hand side. <laughs> so this uh, variety of associativity is true. Um, to a scalar product and a, sorry, a scalar times a scalar, so this is real product and scalar product, is associative. Okay, what about one scalar and two matrices like this? So if we put the parentheses here around our matrix product, this is R times the matrix product AB, which is the sum from k equals 1 to n. So, uh, you know, this is assuming this matrix product is defined. Uh, so the ijth entry for a times b is a i k b k j. And then when you do this scalar product, right, this scalar just sort of jumps inside. But um, we could also. Uh, Oh yeah, let's write that. So R times sum from A, I, K, B, K, J, like this. Okay, let's compare this to, so is this equal to, if we do the scalar product first, like this. So this would be R, A, I, J, times the matrix of the, all the b's. And what is this? Well, this is the sum from k equals 1 to n of r, a, i, k, b, k, j. So are these two things equal? Yeah, they are, because you can just move the r inside the sum here, and then you see that these are equal. So that variety of associativity is also true. Now there's one last flavor of associativity for um, all of these various products, and that is if we have three matrices. So what if we have A times B, and then after that, times C? Is that equal to A times B times C? And this is actually the hardest one to check. Uh, so this is, on the left-hand side, we have um, a times b, and that's the sum from k equals 1 to n of a, i, k, b, k, j times. Um, now, so for c, I'm going to write c as c, j, p, uh, I need some other index, l, c, j, l just so that we don't have 
too many of the same indices running around. Okay, so C, J, L. Okay, um, I'm using J here for the row index on C because the number of rows in C has to equal the number of columns in B, and I'm using J for the column index in B. So by using J in both of these places, I'm indicating that they're actually the same number of uh, same number of possibilities for this index. Okay, so now let's do uh, this matrix product. This is a sum. Right, so now we have to sum over possible values of j, and uh, j goes from, well, it starts at 1, and it goes up to whatever the largest, you know, whatever the number of columns in b is. And usually, we've been calling that p, so let's say p. Uh, so now it's an entry from here, which is the sum from k equals 1 to n, of a i k b k j and then that times c j l right these indices have to have to match for this sum okay yikes that's a bit of a mess but one nice thing about sigmas like this is the order that these are in doesn't matter so we can actually um, do move the k sum to the outside, so k from 1 to n, sum from j1 to p, a, i, k, b, k, j, c, j, l. Okay, but with this sum inside, right, now this a here doesn't depend on the index j, so we can factor it out. And when we do that, what we see is that this is actually the product of all the a's times the sum from j equals 1 to p of b. Uh, oh, maybe I shouldn't have used a j here. Oh. Let me just replace this with something else, k. Um, B, K, J, C, J, L. Okay, so this is just the matrix A, but this thing here is B times C. So you can see at the start we had A times B and then afterwards times C, and at the end we have B times C and afterwards times A on the left. So this matrix product is associative. Okay, good. So we had three things to check for associativity, and it turns out everything is fine. All right. Distribution over matrix addition. Here I'm asking uh, if we have, I guess this is really, no, this is just one thing. Well, sort of two. So what I'm asking here is, if you have A times B plus C, is that equal to A times B plus A times C? And then the second thing that this is we should write is if you have a plus b times c, is this equal to a times c plus b times c? Now I've done the hardest one to check, which is this associativity. So if you maybe use this and do some experimenting, you can check these properties. It turns out everything is fine. <laughs> they're both um, they're both true. All right, next thing to check would be, is there an identity? Now we have a product, so we should ask, is there a matrix identity for this, for this product? In other words, if we have a matrix A, is there some matrix we could, put, we could multiply it by so that you always get the same matrix back? And the question is, the answer is sort of no, because if you, you know, it depends on the size of A, actually. Um, so A is M by N, say, and what we want is also M by N, since it's supposed to be the same matrix. But remember that, so for this matrix product to be defined, um, 
whatever our, if there is an identity, it ought to have an n here, right? And uh, since we want to have an n show up here, there should be an n here, right? These middle sizes get used up. So there can't be just one identity because what matrix goes here, well, even the size of the matrix that goes here depends on the size of the matrix that you started with. So if there is some matrix we can put here, it depends on the size of A. So if there's an identity, there isn't just one of them, there's actually one for every size. Okay, well, if there is one for every size, is there one of this size? And it turns out that the answer is yes. <laughs> yes, there is. So there is an identity for every size. So the identity of size, identity matrix of size one is just a matrix that's nothing but zeros, except down the diagonal, it has ones. And since there are n rows and n columns, right, we know this has to be n by n, since there are n rows and n columns, there have to be the same number of rows and columns, and so the diagonal goes all the way from the upper left all the way to the lower right. Um, and if you uh, take any matrix of an appropriate size and multiply it by this, you get the same matrix back. So just as an example, maybe 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So this has three columns, so the appropriate identity would be 3 by 3, like this. In general, when I write a matrix and I don't write some entries, those entries are 0. So uh, this is 2 by 3 times 3 by 3, and so the result is going to be 2 by 3, which is good. Because, right, this is an identity. We're supposed to get the same matrix over here as we started with. And so then do, then do the multiplication. So our first column is 1, 0, 0. So when we put that over here and then slide down, we get 1 and 4. You can see that since the only non-zero entry was the first one, that sort of picks off the first column here. Then for our second column, 0, 1, 0, Right. It, since the middle is the only non-zero and it's a 1, that sort of picks off the second column. So you get 2, 5, and then the same thing for the last. You get 3, 6, and sure enough, that is the matrix that we started with. So um, the identity matrix of this, si of this size just is three ones down the diagonal. You might wonder, is this also an identity if you put it on the other side? Well. Yes, but you have to change the size of the matrix. So if, right, if you want to have an identity on the left-hand side, then it had better be m by m so that this is defined. It still follows this shape. It's just it might be a different size. OK, so there's an identity. Uh, all right. What else? Well, you might, so you might wonder about inverses, and that's a question that we're going to put off until later. Um, but one other big one that we should think about is commutativity. And there are two flavors of commutativity. We could think about scalar times matrix. I guess this is just scalar multiplication, though, so there's nothing to check there. For genuine matrix multiplication, we would need to ask ourselves, is A times B always equal to B times A? Oops, B times A. Are these always equal? Well, if A is m by n and B is n by p, the other order would be n by p times m by n. And you know, it, it's possible to choose sizes so that both of these are defined, but uh, usually this one won't be defined. This is only defined if p equals m, which isn't always going to be the case. So we really have no reason to expect the matrix product to be commutative, because if you have one product defined, the other product might not even be defined, much less be equal. So prob you know, this is, commutativity is suspect, extremely suspect. Um, but let's work out an example just to see if both products are defined, are they always the same? So let's let's try one. Let's say a is maybe 1, 2, minus 1, 4, and b is, how about 
one, two, one. So I'm just picking these sort of at random. Um, so let's work out A times B. So I'm going to take the columns of B's and sweep them down row-wise on A. So I get 1 minus 1. And then for the second column, I get 2 plus 2 is 4. And then minus 2 plus 4 is 2. So there's A times B. Now let's work out B times A. So now this one, we take the columns of A and sweep them down row-wise along B. So uh, minus 1, sorry, plus 1 to minus 2, so minus 1. Well, already, you know, these aren't going to be the same matrix because their upper left entries aren't the same. But, you know, just to finish, uh, if we take 1, minus 1, and go here, we get a minus 1 there, and then 2 and 4, so we get 2 and 8, so 10, and then 4. So are these the same matrix? Well, definitely not. And I didn't choose special matrices. This is not an exception. I just kind of picked random numbers. And the resulting products uh, are not equal. So you know, if I just picked random numbers, probably what that is telling us is that most matrices, even if both products are defined, um, most, most matrices do not commute. Okay. So commutativity is not the case for matrix multiplication. This is usually, almost always, false. In fact, you know, not even defined in both cases. So um, we gain a lot with matrices, but one thing that we lose is commutativity. So don't accidentally commute matrices unless you really know that they commute.